And so it's not just India that has been irked by Trump's offer to mediate on the Kashmir dispute, even within his own country. Donald Trump has been ridiculed for his lack of expertise on South Asian politics. Safe to say the U.S. government is in damage control mode. A statement released from the House of Representatives said that the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Elliot Engel, had in fact spoken to Harshvardhan Shringla, the Indian ambassador to the United States. The chairman is said to have reiterated U.S.'s position on supporting dialogue, but firmly stated that the dialogue space and scope can only be determined by India and Pakistan effectively vindicating India's stance that Kashmir is a bilateral issue. The chairman also emphasized that if the talks are to be meaningful, then Pakistan must take concrete action against terrorist infrastructure on its soil. Now, U.S. Representative Brad Sherman has called Trump's statement on Kashmir amateurish, delusional and embarrassing. He says, and I quote, everyone who knows anything about foreign policy in South Asia knows that India consistently opposes third-party mediation on Kashmir. Everyone knows Prime Minister Modi would never suggest such a thing. The White House also released a statement after the meeting between the President and Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan. Despite Trump's bold claims that Indian Prime Minister Modi asked him to mediate in the Kashmir dispute, the White House press release has no mention of Kashmir or the offer to mediate. Now, this clearly seems to suggest that the President and his own administration are not on the same page when it comes to Kashmir. And for more details, let's also, we are joined in by our correspondent Siddhant Sibbal and Mr. Nadeem Nusrat, our chairperson, voice of Karachi and South Asia Minorities Alliance Foundation. He's joining us live on Beyond here um, from Washington, D.C. In fact, let me thank both of you, Siddhant and uh, Nadeem, for joining us here on Beyond. Let me begin with Siddhant, first of all. Siddhant, of course, this... Uh, you know, the entire omission of Kashmir from the White House statement only goes on to say the kind of embarrassment Donald Trump has brought to the United States. Well, yes, of course, it's a big embarrassment for uh, the Trump administration because uh, it seems that he has not only stirred uh, a storm in the teacup but also irked New Delhi. New Delhi, of course, was quick to react uh, late last night, clearly reminding Washington of the Shimla and the Lahore Accord, which clearly states where, that when it comes to New Delhi and Islamabad, both can resolve the issue only through bilateral means and no third party intervention. This is uh, a long-standing policy of New Delhi, something that New Delhi has re reiterated time and again. But what Donald Trump has done will, of course, uh, has, uh, will be uh, considered as uh, a major, major uh, gaffe from uh, the Trump administration. But also, uh, it also shows that there is, uh, there is a complete, uh, when it comes to uh, dichotomy or maybe a mismanagement in the Trump administration, because we have seen that the uh, reality action from the U.S. Congress uh, uh, coming and, of course, uh, from the State Department, all saying that uh, it's a bilateral issue and U.S. is only keen to assist, not to mediate or arbitrate in the entire issue. So uh, this is something that uh, Washington will be now keen to damage control. But, of course, Pakistanis will be very happy because uh, it's kind of a diplomatic coup for Imran Khan mm. uh, because he has to sell something to his domestic audience when it go back. And he, of course, will be selling this because there's nothing much from this trip other than, of course, the key mention on the issue of terrorism right. that has been mentioned everywhere, whether it's uh, from the State uh, State Department or whether it's from the readout from the White House. Right. All right. So, as you said, that this might be a diplomatic coup by Imran Khan, but let's not forget this is a clear violation of uh, the Shing Shimla Agreement or the Lahore Declaration, whatever Pakistan has been doing right now. Well, Pakistan is very, very, very keen always to internationalize Kashmir, but that is something that boomerangs on uh, on Pakistan, whether it's the Organization of Islamic Countries or whether it's uh, America. I do expect a statement uh, from the Trump administration in few hours or few days to come when it comes uh, when it comes to Kashmir, and I do expect a U-turn also from the Trump administration. We already have seen uh, how the State Department has reacted and how Congress uh, has uh, reacted. The congressmen have reacted, but uh, by and large, when it comes to uh, 
India Pakistan issues India has clearly said it's uh, uh, when it comes to uh, bilateral issue they have to sit together and resolve no uh, no, no third party intervention right. even though if Pakistan tries its level best uh, as long as both the parties don't agree no other third party will be keen to engage with both the countries and also if we we'll clearly look at the entire bites of Imran Khan and uh, the US president after what US president said he another made another statement that only if Narendra Modi agrees to I will speak to Narendra Modi and see what can we do so that is something that uh, we 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 if we notice shows that somehow Trump perhaps try to make a deal also we will come to the deal making attempt by Donald Trump uh, hang in there with us as I quickly go across to Mr. Nadeem Nusrat who is also joining us live from Washington DC. Uh, Nadeem, how, do you not view Imran Khan's move at the moment as a clever Pakistan ploy to divert attention from the ongoing terrorism that the country is plagued by? Let's not forget even the youth of Pakistan are plagued by the threat of ISIS. Yes, um, that's very much true. Pakistan is plagued by many problems of its own, and terrorism is one of those. And besides terrorism, there are uh, 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 humongous uh, economic problems, inflation, unemployment. So uh, the country is suffering from um, uh, multiple problems at the same time. Uh, this has been, unfortunately, unfortunately, the problem with Pakistan, and it's policies, we are more concerned with what is happening in Afghanistan and in Kashmir than uh, worrying about our own people who are suffering for even basic necessities. Uh, human rights violations are common over there. Right. So I think um, uh, it, 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 Prime Minister Imran Khan, um, it would be much better off for him and, and for the rest of the nation to focus domestically um, and give relief to the people of Pakistan, but again, the ploy has been to divert attention from the domestic issues by using one external issue with another. All right, and Nadeem, uh, we are already witnessing a host of protests that have taken place ever since the time uh, the Pakistan Prime Minister arrived in Washington. The Balochs and the Pashtuns are all protesting against the Pak Prime Minister's presence in Washington. I also believe you have written to the U.S. President requesting him to raise the issue of the minorities uh, like the Balochs, the Pashtuns, the Sindhis, the Muhajirs. Uh, did you receive any sort of response from the U.S. President? Yes, we have. Um, uh, I personally have written a letter, and I am not the only one. Um, uh, my letter has been accompanied by uh, a prominent congressman, Mr. Scott Perry from Pennsylvania, who sits in the influential uh, Foreign Relations Committee. My letter has been personally delivered uh, by uh, Mr. Scott Perry. We also have uh, published a four-page supplement in Washington Times uh, this morning, highlighting the problems which uh, people in uh, Karachi in urban uh, areas of Sin are facing. We have highlighted the problem the Baloch are facing, uh, the PTM movement, which is uh, facing a crackdown, and the persecution and forced conversion of Hindus and uh, persecution of other uh, ethnic minorities. We have also uh, highlighted uh, the issue uh, which is worrying everyone, the rise of extremism, which has been the biggest problem in the region. We all know that um, the uh, the these outfits have always have always been supported by Pakistan's powerful military establishment and have been used within the country as well as outside the country to exert some so-called um, uh, what you call the strategic death in the region, and this has resulted in um, not only a great unrest and the killings of ordinary Pakistanis. Uh, it has also given rise to the elements which are uh, fast becoming a genuine threat. Uh, recently, ISIS uh, made a clear statement that after its defeat in the Middle East, it wants to make Pakistan as its ne next power base. Right. It is a very right. problem for religious minorities as well as ethnic minorities in Pakistan because Pakistani military establishment has used these religious proxies to crush Mohajir and Baloch and Pashtun uh, within Pakistan. All right. Also, Nadeem, it's important to talk about how America, in its pressing desire to withdraw troops from Afghanistan, is willing to grant concessions. Also, do you think it's 
bringing in Kashmir has been sort of a pacifist approach coming in from the United States when Pakistan is concerned because at the same time they're also deflecting attention from other burgeoning issues in Pakistan as you rightly mentioned which is rise of extremism the financial crisis of course being one of them well this is exactly the point um what I am, I'm based in Washington. I have, this is, you know, my daily routine to get in touch with a lot of people here. And it's part of my job here. And the word is, uh, President Trump made an um, announcement in his um, uh, last election campaign that he will get the country out of um, Afghanistan. He wants to honor his words. But the problem is, um, Afghanistan uh, or the problems in Afghanistan have been lingered on by Pakistani intelligence agencies who have been, um, it's not my words, the entire world has been saying all along that without Pakistan's help, Taliban couldn't have continued their insurgency within Afghanistan. So it uh, looks like the uh, current U.S. administration wants to get out of Afghanistan and they're telling, okay, Mr. Imran Khan, help us get out. What do you want? And he has brought up the issue of Kashmir. It, it seems pretty simple, but the problem is um, where will be the end of this? Um, we have seen in the past that, that one problem um, is not over and another issue uh, starts uh, from Pakistan. Hmm. And um, another hmm. issue is uh, Kashmir. If you take the example of Kashmir, um, it's, a, it's for Pakistan, we from, from many decades, we know it's uh, a problem for Pakistan. But at the same time, or Pakistan has been projecting as a problem but Pakistan's own minorities are demanding justice. When the state has failed to grant basic human rights to all those people who are currently living in Pakistan, what the people of Kashmir can expect from this administration or the future administration? Very rightly said. You know, when people of Pakistan have not really uh, had any sort of relief, what can we expect for the Kashmiris? But uh, let me go um, back to Siddhant, who's also joining us on this newscast. Siddhant, as we were talking about Donald Trump's uh, deal-making attempts, is he trying to treat Kashmir in the same light as he's treated the issue of denuclearization in North Korea or the trade talks with China, not to forget the Russian arms deal by Turkey? Well, uh, you never know about uh, Donald Trump, but uh, if he's trying to make a deal uh, when it comes to the uh, when it comes to Kashmir and tries to mediate, this is something that's going to boomerang, and he's going to fa uh, face an epic failure because this is an emotive issue, especially for New Delhi. And the fact that Donald Trump mentioned Kashmir as clear, as saying that he is willing to mediate uh, on Kashmir, uh, shows that New Delhi will now be very cautious when it comes to dealing with Donald Trump because uh, there are several issues as well between Washington and New Delhi. By and large, they, they are allies. They have re, uh, reaffirmed how close they are in, when it comes to uh, being partners and having common uh, uh, thought process on various issues, whether it's terrorism, whether uh, it's global geopolitics. But if any country, whether it's an ally or whether it's an enemy, mentions Kashmir, New Delhi will be irked and will be taking strongly that issue. Uh, and uh, we saw the reaction. We are also getting reports that New Delhi has made a strong protest right. in Washington when it comes to uh, the statement made by U.S. President Donald Trump late right. last night. So as you rightly mentioned, that New Delhi has already made its protest very amply clear to the administration there. How do you think this is uh, going to go down with Washington and New Delhi? Because let's not forget, the Indian Prime Minister is all set to visit the United States. Will it put the two Two countries in a tight spot taking into consideration all these latest developments that, that have taken place. My hunch is that uh, uh, Donald Trump's advisor and of course the State Department are going to tell the President that this is something that he should keep away from when it comes to Kashmir because that means losing an ally and New Delhi cannot, whether it's US or whether it's China, uh, can negotiate its territory or its sovereignty when it comes to Kashmir. We know that New Delhi hasn't even joined this mammoth big project of China, the OBOR, that's a One Belt, One Road initiative, primarily because it passes through a region that is uh, currently under Pakistan's illegal control. And uh, it, ha it ha even though the world, of course, has been very keen to join the Chinese project, New Delhi has... Uh, uh, 
put its uh, its its foot uh, foot on the ground and clearly said it's going not going to join because of single uh, reason that is kashmir and when it comes to washington same message will be sent to washington that if you ever try to meddle mediate or say something about kashmir you're going to get a strong response right. already a strong response has been made right now even as we speak the external affairs minister and the mos are in the parliament at a bjp parliamentary meet we do expect more developments as the day progresses here in new delhi when it comes to the statement made by us Right. Trump. On a last note, let me close this discussion uh, with uh, what Nadeem Nusrat has to say. Uh, Nadeem, I would like your thoughts on how the United States, do you think, is feeling pressurized by Pakistan's growing proximity with China or the issue of withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan? Do you think the United States is bowing down to that pressure? Well, uh, there is uh, this. Uh, on the face of it, it looks like, but I. I think um, the feeling is uh, there is not un unanimity of purpose here. Looks like clearly that um, the current administration wants to uh, get help from Pakistan. At the same time, there are other, uh, uh, like um, the State Department and the Department of Defense, who have long experienced the treachery, uh, the betrayal uh, from Pakistan, that it has been the recipient of a large amount of the U.S. help in the past. and. Despite receiving this, 2,600 U.S. and NATO soldiers have been killed in Afghanistan. And it wouldn't have been possible without the Afghan insurgents receiving help from across the border. So this is um, not an easy situation for the U.S. also. They also see India as an important partner in the region. And they know by trying to please Pakistan would have consequences across the border. Um, my, uh, again main point would be uh, Pakistan should focus on its own issues. It cannot change its neighbors. It has to have good relationship right. with India. With, and also it has to grant basic human rights to everyone within Pakistan, regardless of religion and ethnicity. And Muhajirs who uh, created Pakistan have been deprived of their rights since the inception of Pakistan. It's time to fix those domestic issues. Forget about adventurism across the border.